Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. I'm going to get started in a minute with our very special friend of the family and uh, ATP regular Robert Spencer. First, I want to remind all of you out there in ATP land around the world, please take out your cell phones if you haven't done it already and sign up for our free text message alert system that sends you all of our content to your cell phone right in the palm of your hand and it's simple to do. Just send the word truth, T-R-U-T-H in the message box and address it to the number 88202, push send. It'll sign you up in about five seconds. It's free and you'll get everything, including today's special guest where everything he does with ATP, Robert Spencer. Robert is the founder and publisher of Jihad Watch. He's written about two dozen books. He is the nation's expert on jihad in America and around the world. Welcome back, my good friend, Robert Spencer. Always good to talk to you, Barry. Thank you. I spent, as I said to you in the, uh, in the pre-show chat, uh, hours reading your articles this week. My <laughs> goodness, have you been prolific. Uh, let's dive right in. Um, let's start in Israel. They have banned a few terror front groups uh, from the NGO OK list. And uh, Biden's White House has blasted Israel for banning these groups, saying they are human rights representatives. My understanding is Israel banned like five out of several hundred, maybe four or five hundred. And these five are clearly, without question, managed by and in support of and often funded by terror networks. Uh, the evidence that you presented in your articles is extensive. What are the highlights? What should we know? Well, these, these groups are affiliated with the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, which is one of the older groups that uh, are designated as terrorist groups in the uh, uh, Jihad Against Israel. The PFLP is actually a communist group or was at its inception and uh, has allied with jihad groups, both having the same goal of wanting to destroy Israel utterly. The Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine has been responsible for numerous jihad terror attacks against innocent Israeli civilians, including Leila Khaled. Uh, Leila Khaled is uh, a terrorist with the PFLP. She tried to blow up an airplane, which would have killed hundreds of people, of course, and uh, she was recently in the news because a university in the United States wanted her to speak and Zoom actually wouldn't let her because she is a uh, known terrorist. But as far as the Biden State Department is concerned and the international media as well, Israel is wrong to ban people who are affiliated with this obvious terrorist group. This is all of a piece with Biden's clear preference for Palestinian jihadis over Israel and his re-implementation of the Obama era policies of coddling and appeasing the Palestinians and turning a blind eye to their genocidal jihadi rhetoric while putting pressure on Israel and claiming that Israel is the obstacle to making peace. You know, to add to that, I was very surprised. There's this guy at the State Department, Ned Price, who was very angry that Israel did this without consulting with the United States first, which I find disingenuous for two reasons. Number one, Robert, we don't run Israeli internal policies. Israel does. It's outlandish and rather presumptuous for the State Department to even suggest they have to approve whatever Israel does for internal security. But number two, Israel came out and said, no, Mr. Price is not telling the truth. We briefed the State Department on why these NGOs are being banned. They're terror fronts. And Mr. Price is not telling the truth. Well, this doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, the Biden administration in general is simply not honest, and they have lied on numerous occasions about all sorts of things, and so uh, that they would be dishonest in regard to Israel in a way that is designed to make Israel look bad on the international stage, that doesn't surprise me at all. This is the most anti-Israel administration that has ever been in the White House since the founding of the modern state of Israel. I agree with you. Let's, let's go to Germany. You, you wrote an article that just turned my stomach. Oh, my God. The news you brought to the West. And I didn't know about this. 
But for you, Robert, the story of this German gal that went to the Middle East because she decided she wanted to marry an ISIS warrior, um, she just was sentenced to 10 years in prison for complicity in the murder of a slave that they bought. They bought this, she got married. They bought this Yazidi girl, um, five years old, and they owned her. And when she wet the bed when she was sick, uh, the husband chained her to a tree out in the sun and said, you can't give her water until she literally died of thirst. And this woman in her trial, when she went back to Germany said, the reason she wouldn't give the girl who lay dying in the scorching heat water, she was afraid her husband would push her. I'm disgusted. Why in the world is the world silent in the face of this savagery? I don't get it. Uh, the short answer to that, Barry, is that the world is silent in the face of this savagery because it all comes out of Islam. And the wow. international media seems to be committed to the proposition that any news that might portray Islam in a bad light is ignored or is explained away in whatever way they can. This story is Islamic from beginning to end. In the first place, Jennifer Wenish, the, the German girl that you're referring to, the German young lady, was a convert to Islam. That was why, of course, she wanted to marry an ISIS jihadi, because she admired ISIS and thought of it as authentically Islamic. So they end up in Iraq, she and her husband, they buy a slave girl. Why do they buy a slave? Because slavery is permitted in Islam. Nobody wants to talk about this in the West. Islamic apologists in the West will rely on the ignorance of their audiences and deny it up and down, but it's very clear from the Islamic texts. The Quran takes slavery for granted. Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, owned slaves, bought slaves, sold slaves. He never, there is nothing in the Quran or in Muhammad's example that says free all the slaves or slavery is wrong. And so because Muhammad is the excellent example of conduct and the Quran is the perfect guide for all time, slavery is okay. So they buy this Yazidi. She's a slave because the Yazidis were defeated and conquered by ISIS. And so the uh, women and children can be made into slaves. This is also in Islamic law. And specifically the Quran says that you can take the uh, non-Muslim women and make them into sex slaves. But that's another, the many other stories about that. That's one thing that doesn't come into play in this, at least as far as we know. So they have this five-year-old girl and the husband wants to punish her. Why does he decide that punishing her must take the form of putting her out in the scorching heat and denying her water, Muhammad did it. And if Muhammad does it, it's right. There's a hadith, a report of Muhammad's words and deeds about uh, some men from the Uraina tribe, it says, who came to visit Muhammad and he was nice to them and they became Muslims and then they changed their minds and left and they stole some of the things that Muhammad had given to them. So Muhammad had them hunted down and captured, and he staked them out in the desert on the ground and refused to give them any water, and they died there. And so this guy's punishment to this girl is exactly in imitation of the man he thinks of as the prophet of Allah. And so then, adding insult to injury, she only gets 10 years, Jennifer Wenish, because the establishment the political elites, as well as the media, want to whitewash stories like this. They don't want them out. And consequently, they, back, they, they soft pedal even those who commit them. They don't want their Muslim communities in Germany to get angry. And they don't want it to appear as if they're Islamophobic enough to come down hard on Islamic behavior. So 10 years for a murder. Unbelievable. Thank you for bringing this story to the public, Robert. You know, oh, wait, Barry, there's another thing sure. I forgot. He, she's afraid. Jennifer Wenish is afraid that her husband is going to beat her if she helps the little girl, because the Quran, chapter four, verse thirty-four, sanctions the beating of disobedient women. It's allowed. It's uh, there's, there's spousal abuse in all cultures, but only in Islam is it given divine sanction. And so she had every reason to be concerned about that. I I, I want to personally thank you on behalf of everyone that cares about freedom and women's rights for bringing this story out because 
sadly, pathetically, and unbelievably, it's not in the press, but for you. So thanks for that. Thank you. Um, President Trump uh, said in a statement released the other day that the United States is now the laughing stock of the world in regards to the Afghan withdrawal and the terrorism that's coming uh, as a result of the United States gone. He actually went on to say, this is Trump, that 97% of the people that came out of Afghanistan uh, and were loaded up on our planes shouldn't be here because they're not checked. We have no background. We don't know who they are. And he's talking about the stupidity of the United States State Department uh, for permitting and encouraging this, um, notwithstanding the fact that billions and billions, hundreds of billions in equipment is now in the hands of Iran, uh, China, and anyone else they want to give it to and will be used to kill Americans. In your opinion, is Trump right? Oh, absolutely, Barry. He's certainly right. Uh, if anything, his 97% estimate is a bit low. Uh, <laughs> because we know that the interpreters and the special immigrant visa applicants were not on the planes out of Kabul. We know that the Biden administration, which lies all the time, admitted this. Now, this is not something that they're lying about because they don't lie in a way that makes them look bad. And this makes them look very bad. So that they admitted it, it's probably even worse than they're telling us. But there's, they told us that the people who got on the planes were not the people who helped us when we had the military in Afghanistan. That's one thing. The other thing is, we don't know who they are at all. It took Daryl Issa, the congressman from California, to go to Alu Dade Air Base in Qatar, because near there is a camp where these Afghan refugees are being prepared to come to America in who knows what way, and then they're brought here. And the camp officials would not let him in, which is also very suspicious. But in the course of his discussions with them, they told him that 12,000 Afghans had already passed through that camp and were in the United States who had no ID whatsoever. So we're being told by Biden's people that these people are being vetted. How are you gonna vet somebody when you don't even know who they are? The idea of vetting is you're supposed to be checking to see if they're members of terrorist groups. You don't know who they, these people are. Not only that, but the Biden administration, of course, like the Obama administration, doesn't even admit that Islamic Jihad is real. So how can they check for people with Jihad sentiments? They can't and they didn't. So we have 12,000 people in here now, at least 95,000 altogether who are coming. And we don't know who they are. We don't know how many are Jihadis. And the Biden administration is bringing them in the dark of night into American communities. The consequences of this could be absolutely catastrophic. And yet, you're a racist and a bigot and an Islamophobe if you raise any objections. Well said, Robert Spencer. Tell our audience how they can find out and find not only your books, but your writings and your teachings. Yeah, I'm at uh, jihadwatch.org, which is the only news site in the world that covers jihad activity in all its forms in every area where it is uh, being uh, pursued today, including the United States. And uh, at Jihad Watch RS on Twitter, there is an Amazon author page for me, uh, Robert Spencer, with 23 books and uh, another one coming out soon, The Critical Quran, which is the first honest translation of the Quran plus commentary in the English language. I want a copy of that when it comes out. Okay. Thanks it, for right coming Right now on it's today. caught up in the Let's Go Brandon supply chain <laughs> delays, but it should be out soon. <laughs> Well said. Astute observation as usual, Robert Spencer. And for those of you that didn't do it when I asked earlier, please sign up for our uh, alert system. You'll get all our shows like this one with the great intuitive and brilliant Robert Spencer on your cell phone simply by texting the word truth to the number 88202. For ATP Report, thanks for joining us today. I'm Barry Newsbaum.